Under the leadership of the Chinese Communist Party, the Chinese literary world has always remained quiet. However, recently, a previously unknown person in the poetry world has suddenly become popular, which has made the money-oriented Chinese society to pay closer attention to poetry. The popular poet in question is Jia Qianqian. One of her poems, titled Lang Lang, recently appeared on Weibo's trending search list. Let us take a look. Qingqing Qing shouted, "Sister is pooping on my bed." When we ran to there, Lang Lang has already calmed down. Pinching a piece of poop, she got off the bed. She looked like a returning king. Afterwards, many Chinese netizens uncovered her other works, including "Real Fragrant," "My Mother," and "Hope," and found that words such as "poop," "urine," "fart," and similar vulgarities frequently appeared in her works. Therefore, netizens called them the "feces and urine" type poems. Jia Qianqian is an associate professor at Northwest University School of Arts in China, where she is a PhD candidate in modern and contemporary literature, and vice chairman of the Shanxi Province Youth Literature Association. A number of poets and writers in China's literary circles have written reviews of Jia's poems, and she has been revered as a poetic genius. Jia's poems also won the second Shanxi Youth Literature Award for poetry. Now, how did Jia Qianqian become famous for such vulgar works? Literature Free Talk magazine recently published commentaries about Jia Qianqian on their WeChat account, referring to her poems as "dirty and disgusting junk," and that her basic writing skills are poor, comparing them to a junior high school student. It also cited Jia's multiple spelling errors. The articles pointed out that the reason for her success is largely because of her father, Jia Pinghua. He is also the vice chairman of the Chinese Writers Association and chairman of the Shanxi Writers Association. Given this, one can understand why critics were so willing to write positive reviews regarding his daughter's poems. After Jia Qianqian's many poems were circulated. Chinese netizens commented on her success with remarks such as "The daughter succeeds because of the father," "Literature is dead," and "The most disgusting incident in the history of literature." Jia Qianqian's style poetry, also known as Qianqian poetry, recently gained interest on the internet, where many consider her to be a representative of a generation of young people in China. Who benefits from a family member's reputation but lacks any talent of their own? Some netizens used Qianqian poetry as a model and wrote a poem to satirize it. Here is an example. Turns out the gap between me and the poet are only a few swear words and a dad. Jia Qianqian became an associate professor and a famous poet not because of any real ability but because of her family's prominence. The circle of politics, military, and business under the Chinese Communist Party have almost all followed a similar pattern. In the Chinese military, in particular, the promotion of generals is highly dependent on their family background. Among the most famous is Major General Mao Xinyu, grandson of former Chinese Chairman Mao Zedong. Mao studied at Renmin University, one of the top universities in China. According to his high school classmates, he lived in his own privileged world, doing whatever he wanted to do in school, such as leaving classes early and playing on the sports field. Other than his political science class, where he scored little more than sixty points out of a hundred, he could not pass any other subject. Later, Mao received a master's and doctorate degree, for the same family reasons. Mao, like his grandfather, enjoyed calligraphy. One of General Mao's famous calligraphic works is "Three Gorges Is a Female Dam," which actually should have been written as "Three Gorges Is a Good Dam." This can be seen as a play on words. Many Chinese characters are actually made up of two or more other characters. For example, this character, which means "good," is one character made up of two other Chinese characters, and when these two characters are used separately, it means "female." In this case, Mao split the first character into two distinct characters and changed the meaning from "good" to "female." It's worth noting that the difference between the two is taught in any first-grade classroom across China. 
Another example is the current vice chairman of the Chinese Communist Party's military commission, Zhang Youxia, who was born to Zhang Zhongxun, a general in the People's Liberation Army. After Zhang graduated from high school and had nothing to do, he became a soldier. With his father's connections in the military, he rose through the ranks quickly, becoming a deputy division commander at the age of 34, and receiving a community college diploma at the age of 36. Before eventually rising to vice chairman of the military commission, another Chinese official, He Dian, also known as the director of calligrapher, became well known with his book Peace Sutra. The book was first published in 2019 and is priced at 299 yuan or 46 U.S. dollars. He Dian is the former deputy secretary of the party committee and executive deputy director of the public security department of Jilin Province. The main content of the book is a combination of words in the form of "peace for blank." It could be numbers, place names, age, industries, organs, etc. For example, "peace for men" and "peace for women," "peace at birth," "peace at full term," "peace at 100 days," "peace at one year old," "peace at two years old," all the way to "peace at 99 years old," and more. The Jilin Department of Emergency Management recommended Peace Sutra via its WeChat public account in May of 2020. Also that month, the Jilin Daily published a review praising the book, describing it as a transnational heirloom scripture masterpiece. Officials read this book to comprehend their original mission. Scholars read this book to understand the philosophy of peace. Businessmen read this book to have a safe and secure business. And people read this book to enjoy the peace in the world. In June 2020, the political and legal committee of the Jilin Provincial Committee, the propaganda department of the Provincial Committee, the Provincial Federation of Literary and Cultural Affairs, the Youth League, and the Changchun Daily News co-sponsored a recitation of Peace Sutra with guest professor Hang Qinxiang of Jilin University, with Jilin television personalities Zhang Linyun. And Zhao Chen reciting the excerpts. All this cultural chaos reflects the low-level orientation of contemporary Chinese society. The CCP bureaucracy is greedy and morally corrupt, which led to the decay of Chinese society. The media is a tool for the CCP to brainwash the public, and its content is full of praise for the CCP and subjugates the public to complete obedience. Literary and artistic works are full of vulgarities. That have led to the corrupt society that warships money, power, and violence. In 2020, the Chinese media reported that the deputy class president of an elementary school in Huayuan County, Anhui Province, had the power to check homework and supervise memorization. He repeatedly forced students to eat feces and drink urine on the pretext of checking their homework and monitoring their progress. He also took bribes. Accepting more than twenty thousand in bribes from other students in five years, and he has a special student who kept the bribe money for him. He also had a special student who took him to school on a bicycle. He was not tall and only thirteen years old, but he used his power to the extreme. In two thousand and nine, a Chinese media reporter was covering the opening of an elementary school. The reporter asked the students who had just started elementary school what they wanted to do when they grow up, and one of them, a six-year-old girl, replied that she wanted to be an official. When the reporter asked what kind of official, the girl said to be a corrupt official because corrupt officials have a lot of things. This video sparked a lot of debate. These phenomena are thought-provoking. China has a history of five thousand years of civilization. And its traditional culture is extensive and profound. In ancient China, it was known as a country of civilization and etiquette, and it advocated mutual respect and care between people. Good and evil are rewarded. It's the common sense of society. Loyalty, filial piety, and justice are the norms of human society, and benevolence, righteousness, courtesy, wisdom, and trust are the moral foundations for regulating people and society. Since the Chinese Communist Party seized power, it has systematically and deliberately destroyed traditional Chinese culture. At the same time, it has instilled the CCP's party culture into the people, promoting hatred and struggle, 
and engaging in political campaigns, resulting in the deterioration of social and moral standards and everyone viewing each other as enemies. Culture is the soul of a nation, a spiritual element that is as important as the material elements of race and land. The CCP's destruction of traditional culture has been carried out systematically and continuously since its seizure of power, the most prominent example being the Cultural Revolution that started in May 1966. Starting from August 1966, monasteries, Taoist temples, Buddhist statues, historical sites, calligraphy, painting, and various antiques all over the country immediately became the main targets of destruction by the Red Guards. Take Buddha statues as an example. There were 1,000 glazed statues of Buddha at the top of one show mountain in the Summer Palace in Beijing, and after the Four Olds campaign, they were all incomplete and none of them were intact. This is the case in the capital city and the whole country. In addition to destroying cultural relics, the CCP also destroys religions, forcing people to give up their faith and forcing monks, nuns, and Taoists to resume secular life. The Communist Party sent its own people to infiltrate religions and set up Buddhist and Taoist associations, which in their initiation documents clearly stated that they would be under the leadership of the people's government. This means under the leadership of the atheistic Communist Party. Therefore, it was not uncommon for monks to raise the national flag and sing the national anthem in monasteries or temples. Take Christianity as an example. Wu Yaozong, who advocated and actively promoted the three self-patriotic movement of self-governance, self-support, and self-propagation, became the first chairman of the Chinese Christian Three Self-Patriotic Movement Committee in 1954 and has been actively cooperating with the Chinese Communist Party in persecuting people who do not join the Three Self-Patriotic Movement. But even so, when the Cultural Revolution broke out in 1966, the Three Self-Patriotic Movement was not spared. Wu Yaozong was criticized by the Red Guards and accepted labor reform. After several major traditional religions had been forced to bow their heads, the CCP took action against those intellectuals who inherited traditional culture in 1957. This is the famous anti-rightist struggle. Many intellectuals who adhere to traditional ethics are labeled as rightists, and there are as many as 550,000 of such rightists throughout the country. The scholar class, which was a model of traditional social morality, disappeared just like this. Culture can influence the rise and fall of a nation, and once the cultural heritage is broken, the soul of a nation will perish with it.